everything you're about to see could be true, or it could be the figment of our celebrity's imagination. It all depends on whether you believe. Have we all been here before? In a past life? Coming up, clowning around, front row seats to the greatest show on earth. Fall Guy, tragedy strikes on the high wire. He's still moving, he's, I mean, he's unconscious, but he's shaking. Sticky fingers, from clown to criminal. It'll end in tears. Historical fact or fiction, it's decision time. By the early 1800s, exactly the date we're talking about, the tent very definitely has made an appearance. There's no doubt that a fall from that height would indeed be fatal. He was at the height of his fame in 1817, exactly the date John gives us. That's next on Have I Been Here Before? Hello, where do you stand on the subject of reincarnation? Are you one of the millions who believe? Perhaps you're not so sure. We're about to meet a man who is pretty sure there is something in it. The next 30 minutes could very well change all that. Let's find out who's looking to answer the question, have I been here before? Doctor Who star John Barrowman is used to time travel. Will his latest adventure turn out to be science fiction or science fact? John, welcome. How are you feeling now, just before you, you watch it? I'm quite nervous, actually, um, and I was nervous before I went in, but I'm excited because, uh, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's walking into the unknown, really. And, what what uh, were your thoughts to... before you went in? Were you on the fence, believer? I'm a believer because my mother is very spiritual, and I'm spiritual in that sense that I believe there is a, a, an afterlife or a, a, a prior life that you can be involved in. Well, uh, you certainly got into it, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since we filmed John's regression. Up until now, he hasn't seen the tape of what happened. I think it's time to put that right. If you're ready, here you go. Regression therapist Andrea Fawkes starts by helping John achieve a state of deep relaxation. It's only then she believes that he'll be able to recall memories stored in his subconscious. Others would argue that everything you're about to hear is the result of an overactive imagination. The question is, what will John think? You inside or outside? I'm inside. And what are you inside of? Tent. What kind of tent? Circus tent. And how do you feel in the circus tent? Happy. Are you aware of having a physical body? Mm. What kind I'm, a of... I'm a clown. And how do you feel about being a clown? Really good. <laughs> What's funny? I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at myself in the mirror. And how do you look? <laughs> I look very silly. What, do you, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a, a striped white, red, red and white striped kind of punch like you know, like, like a, a parachute kind of outfit mm -hmm. it's very big with ruffles and i have big red feet and a really white face and the pointed hat and i have a big red bauble on the top my name's oliver and what's your family name nostrovich oliver nostrovich mm -hmm. and where do you live oliver in bucharest and how old are you when you're this clown? Nineteen. And where are your family? They're in, in Bucharest also. And what do they do for a living? They're circus. We're, we're, we're um, uh, circus, circus, circus people. Mm -hmm. And what part does your father play in the circus? My father and mother, are they're, they're trapeze, trapeze artists. But I'm a clown. <laughs> Clowns? Uh, not in the family, mm. just me. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of, it's really, it's strange. Why is it strange? Because my, who, oh, my, my, my family are trapeze artists and I'm the one, if anything happens, I'm the one who has to make the crowd laugh. They perform without a net. And how does that make you feel? Really strange. Mm. What year is it? 1817. Whereabouts do you live with your family? I guess you call us gypsies mm -hmm. because we live in a like a wagon, a gypsy wagon. And what does the wagon look it's like? It's really colorful. It's lots of flowers on the outside. There's red, green, yellow. It's, it's all spiral. We painted it. 
Okay, let's go ahead in time now to the next significant event in that lifetime, the next significant event. I'm watching the trapeze. And who's on the trapeze? My dad's the bass and my brother. They're doing a trick. And is there an audience? There's an audience, but it's not, it's, they've slipped. My brother's fallen. And where's your brother now? On the ground. Just, I'm surrounded by people. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to make them laugh. I'm a bit, a bit scared, but I, I know I have to get them away from him. He's still moving. He's not, it's, he's, so he's, I, but he's unconscious, but he's shaking. I have to go, I have to, I have to go over to him. I'm getting in, I'm, someone's pulling me. Who's pulling me? Someone's you? pulling me. Stop pulling me! And how does that make you Really feel? angry! I have to help him. I have to help my brother. And what does the man say, the man the, with the, the hand? I'm supposed to make people laugh. Make them... Mm -hmm. I can't make them laugh! They're, t they're putting him on this, the, 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 like a, a cloth. Mm -hmm. And they're carrying him. And what about the audience? They're being moved back to their seats. Mm -hmm. And I'm being taken... I'm being... Why are you being taken? I'm being taken out. Let's move on in time now to the next significant event in that lifetime. And how old are you now? Mid-twenties. I'm like 20, 25, 26. There's no... no circus anymore. What happened to the circus? No, we, we're not in the circus anymore. There's still a circus. We're not in it. So we're just wandering. My, my father's worried. So now you've no money. Mm. And how do you live? How do you find the money for food? We, we scrounge and beg. <sighs> OK, let's go ahead in time to the next significant event in that lifetime, the next significant event. My brother's dead, and I'm looking after my parents. And where are you living now? We're still in the wagon. Oh. What's happened? Hmm? I'm a thief. You're a thief? Yep. Don't tell anyone. My mom and dad don't know. And what do you steal? Things. What kind of things? Food. Oh, it makes me really nervous to talk about it. Why is that? I don't know. I think it's because it's... I know it's wrong. We have to have it. I quite, I quite like it. Mm-hmm. You like stealing yeah. things? Yep. Why it's, do you like it's stealing? It's exciting. Mm-hmm. Exciting. OK, let's go ahead in time to the next significant event in that lifetime, the next significant event. What's happening now? I'm in jail. And how come you're in jail? stole off a woman in a one of those kind of women hmm. and what did you steal from this woman I tried to steal her bag it had lots of money in it mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what did the notes look like or the coins they were blue there was a picture on them of an old man with a, with a beard pointy beard goatee like goatee, you know, with a mustache around his mouth and down the pointy beard like that. And did he have a name? The Rock. Rock Munnan? No. I don't know. I can't say it. I can't pronounce it. And how did they find you? I was running. There was a fire. They burned my, my, uh, my wagon. Who burned your wagon? The people who came to get me. And who were these people? People from the town. What was the town's name? Bucharest. Mm -hmm. What year was this when they burned your wagon? 18... It's 1860. So, there you are. That's, uh, uh, we've, had, uh, we've had people who've you know, sort of burst into tears and all sorts of high emotion in these sort of things, but I mean, that was a real roller coaster. Yeah, I'm laughing and everything. It's, it's bizarre. I like the bit where I, 
I, I like it. <laughs> Stealing. <laughs> that is bizarre to watch. Well, obviously, we've sent our historian out to uh, see what he could find. So, coming up, we are uh, in the front row to see what the history shows. Find out next if John's story checks out. Well, in 1812 and 1815, the Russians did issue five ruble banknotes. It was the job of the clown to distract the audience should the worst happen. Now, welcome back. Before the break, John Barrowman treated us to ringside seats at the circus as he appeared to experience life as a clown in a past life. I'm a clown. <laughs> What's funny? I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at myself in the mirror. And how do you look? <laughs> I look very silly. OK, it's time to find out if John's story is more fact than fiction as we catch up with historian Jules Hudson. Ready? Ready. Here we go. So John takes us back to the colourful city of Bucharest back in 1817 for what appears to be quite a tantalising story of life in the early circus. But as ever, is there any truth in it? Were there circuses back in the early 1800s and can I find any trace of Oliver Nostrovich? Or is this whole story just the product of John's wild imagination clowning around? Let's see what we can find. Are you inside or outside? I'm inside. And what are you inside of? Tent. What kind of tent? Circus tent. And how do you feel in the circus tent? Happy. Well, happy or not, the question is, could our man have been in a tent back in 1817? Now, the modern circus, as we know it, doesn't start until around about 1768, but it was a much simpler affair, just a couple of jugglers and a couple of acrobats in an open field without a tent in sight. But by the early 1800s, exactly the date we're talking about, the tent very definitely has made an appearance. So, so far, so good. But the next clue is, I think, particularly colourful, which is why I've come down here to the Clown Museum in London to check it out. I'm a clown. What, do you, what are you wearing? You're like a, a parachute kind of outfit. It's very big, with ruffles, and I have big red feet and a really white face and the pointed hat, and I have a big red bauble on the top. My name's Oliver. Now, having the name of Oliver is really useful, but it's his description of the clown, which I think is really revealing. Now, if you and I think of a clown today, we think of a man with a big red nose and large floppy feet. But if we looked at one back in history, our image might be quite different. Have a look at this guy. It's a picture of a man called Joseph Grimaldi, a man regarded by many as the father of modern clowning. Now, he was the first man to introduce face paint, white paint, and lots of it, just as John describes in his regression. And what's more, he was at the height of his fame in 1817, exactly the date John gives us. Now, one of the most important parts of the Clown Museum is this thing. It's called the Egg Register. Now, the Code of Clowning states that each clown should have their own individual look and their own individual act to make them absolutely unique from one another. And their faces are recorded on these eggs like a sort of a clown trademark, if you like. Here, for example, is our old friend Joseph Grimaldi. I just wonder what Oliver's egg would have looked like. I'm watching the trapeze. They're doing a trick. And is there an audience? There's an audience, but it's not... It's, they've slipped. My brother's fallen. Here I am at the Moscow State Circus. Now, when most of us think of the trapeze, we tend to think of this, the flying trapeze. As an act, it was developed in 1859 in France by a man called Jules Lyotard, a guy now more famous for his skin-tight clothing than for acts like this. But just standing underneath it, there's no doubt that a fall from that height would indeed be fatal. But John goes on to give us more details about the trapeze itself. My, my, my family are trapeze artists, and I'm the one, if anything happens, I'm the one who has to make the crowd laugh. They perform without a net. And how does that make you feel? Really strange. Well, John certainly does give us lots of detail, but there is a conflict. Now, the date he gives us is 1817, but as we've seen, trapeze doesn't come in until the 1850s. So, to be frank, the date is a problem, but you can't overlook all that detail. Now, early trapeze was rigged just 15 feet off the floor. It didn't use a net, just as John describes, but of course accidents could and did occur. And it was the job of the clown to distract the audience should the worst happen. So all in all, I think this is pretty good. But what about his name? And what's your family name? Nostrovich. 
Oliver Nostrovich. Now, the great thing about family names is that their origins and their history can be a real help in trying to make sense of stories just like this one. Now, to my mind, Nostrovich is a bit Slavic. It certainly sounds very Russian, yet the story we learn is set in Bucharest, miles away. So the question is, how could Oliver have got there? Well, the good thing is that his family were travellers. Romani travellers had two names, one of which was public, and traditionally it was based upon the language and the culture of the place in which they had settled. Now, at the time, in the early 1800s, control of Bucharest was being disputed by, amongst others, the Russians. So, is this where Oliver gets his surname? I guess you call us gypsies, mm -hmm. because we live in a, a gypsy wagon. And what does the wagon look it's like? It's really colourful. Lots of flowers on the outside. We painted it. Now, we're all familiar with the traditional 19th century image of a wooden Romany caravan, gaily painted. But the truth is, back in 1817, the caravan itself would have been slightly different. It wasn't made of wood, it was made of canvas, a bit like one of those things you'd see in a Western movie. But just as John describes, it too would have been highly decorated. So all in all, I think the Romany picture we're getting isn't bad. But there is one more detail. I tried to steal her bag. It had lots of money in it. What did the notes look like, or the coins? They were blue. There was a picture on them of an old man with a, with a beard, pointy beard. Now, the detail that John describes on the banknote might help support the rest of the story. Now, bear in mind we're looking at Bucharest in 1817, a city soon to come under Russian control. Well, in 1812 and 1815, the Russians did issue five ruble banknotes, and they were big and they were blue, so it seems perfectly reasonable that such a thing could have been up for grabs in Bucharest. I'm in jail. And how come you're in jail? I stole off a woman. Whatever the truth behind the story of our tragic clown, there is no doubt that there are more than a couple of good details and some interesting history to back them up. But as ever, does it get us any closer to revealing the man behind the face paint? How do you feel now? I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite stunned because I, I thought, you know, the one thing that probably would not be right would be the, the money. You ask me, John, which is the money of that time, of that era, I couldn't even tell you what was before shillings and pence. And they said it was big, blue, and, I mean, that was, that was exactly what I saw, big blue notes. Let's, uh, let's have a look at some of the other, the other bits and pieces that we, that we saw there. You were very animated, as, as, as we said. How did you feel when you were regressed? Because the pictures seemed to be very vivid. Well, it was, they were. They were very vivid in my head, and I, when I was describing something, I was actually... I mean, I remember looking down at the outfit and seeing the outfit on myself. It was, it was almost like I, it was like I stepped out of myself in the chair and looked at everything else. I remember feeling happy. You know, strong emotions. Strong emotions inside, and that's, I, I would say that's why I was laughing. Yeah. What do you know about circuses and, and clowns? Are, are you a fan so of circus? I, I've, I've been to Cirque du Soleil, you know, and I, I, I probably was taken to a circus as a child. You know, uh, it's foreign to me. Well, are there any parallels between his life then and, and your life now? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I have a very close-knit family myself. Um, I speak to my mother and father every day, uh, and my sister. I speak to my brother a lot. Um, what, what, what about uh, the, the job of a clown, as you said there, was that he's, he would distract should something go wrong? Right. What about you? If, if, if you're in an um, embarrassing situation, if something goes quiet at, at, a, at a meal, are oh, you the one I'm, that jumps I'm, in? Yes, I'm the first one to jump in and to do it. It's funny because as we're, we're talking about this now, I probably was the most clear and uh, uh, focused I have been in a long time uh, after I did this. I'm still very much Oliver in that aspect of, of trying to make people laugh, trying to fill in the blanks, trying to keep the, the story going, that kind of thing. And the thieving? <laughs> I, <laughs> I will say, no. <laughs> no on that one. He was a very happy thief, wasn't he? I mean, loved the excitement, loved the thrill, quite Now, obviously. see, I can, re I can relate to that aspect because there's a side to us that if you do something that's a little naughty, you get a thrill from it. I like extreme sports, that kind of stuff, and I get that thrill that he said he was experiencing from 
the stealing and you know I've done some extreme things sport wise <laughs> um, that I know if my mother and father if they would probably you know clip me around the ear but you know it, I, it's that kind of thing oh, don't tell them what about the, the exotic location? Were you, were you surprised that you picked... Uh, I mean, you, 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 what are you, born in London, uh, Italian? I, mean, I, was, I, was born, I was born in Glasgow. Right. Uh, and raised... Uh, then my, my father moved us to the U.S. with the, the company, and I was raised then in the Midwest. But I don't know of any Russian or, you know, Eastern influence in the family at all. So that's, come, that's a bit of a... Where does that come from? Well, you're not, a, you're not a, a serious clown now, so you can't actually go into the, the clown registry. Uh, but we have actually had oh. your, your clown made. So, uh, so there you are. Fantastic. That's uh, just a little memento of your past life. Absolutely great. There's Oliver. So then, have you been here before? I think I have. I mean, I believe it, and uh, uh, I, this kind of proves it. Well you know, that solidifies it for me. And even if I wasn't, um, I think I was, but it was a great experience. I think I have been here before. Right, John, thank you very much. Thank well, there you, you go. Much. John thinks he's, uh, he's been here before. What do you think? That's it for now. But next time on Have I Been Here Before? Forbidden love, a secret affair with a common carpenter. Trapped, a loveless marriage with a man who doesn't care. But whose past life will it be? Victorian society was fundamentally divided by class and it was obsessed with ideas of being seen to do the right thing. 